At the base of almost every application, there is a database, which is why it's absolutely crucial to be able to find out information about what's happening via its logs. Let's look at how we can do this in MySQL and the four types of logs we can utilize error logging, general logs, binary logs, and slow query logs, as well as centralizing our logs and the metrics about our MySQL server. Before we do that though, how about sending an update to YouTube's database by subscribing for more programming tutorials. And if you're interested in hearing about building and scaling software from the team here at BetterStack, go ahead and sign up for the Hacking Scale newsletter. Now let's look at MySQL logging. So to get started here, I am on Ubuntu and I've already installed MySQL server. If you need to do that, you can go ahead and do sudo apt update. And then all you need to do after that is do sudo apt install mysql server. But I'm going to assume you've probably already got your database configured as you're already looking at how you can view the logs of it. The place we're going to be able to find our logs here on Linux is going to be at slash var slash log like so. You can go ahead and list what's in there and you can see there is a mysql folder. So if we go into that as well and then list the files in there, you should see one by default and that's going to be called error.log. And that's the first type of mysql log we are going to look at. Let's go ahead and open this up you can either use sudo less here or sudo cat if you want to i'm going to be using less so if we do sudo less and then error.log we're going to get this nice interface here now don't panic if you're seeing a load of entries in this error log already it is going to contain some messages about the startup and shutdown times of your server so you don't need to panic and assume there's an error when there's something in here but in general this file is going to contain the diagnostic messages such as those errors warnings and also notes that occur when the server's starting up shutting down and also while it's running for example if mysql notices that a table needs to be automatically rebuilt it's going to go ahead and log an error to this error log here so as we can see we can see the information for our application we can see the timestamp of the log messages this is the thread id this is the label so whether it's system warning and some various other things this is going to be the error code or sort of the general code if it's not an error this is going to be the subsystem that it was running on and then you can see the error message there so maybe if your mysql server is struggling to start up or something like that you may go here and you can find out why now it's worth noting as well that by default, this is gonna have a verbosity of two, which is gonna log out the errors and warnings. You can actually change this with a line in the MySQL config, which is log underscore error underscore verbosity. And what that's gonna do, if you change it to one, it's just gonna log out errors. If you change it to two, like default, it's gonna be errors and warning. And three is gonna be a bit more information with error, warning, and information. But in general, I would just leave it as that default of two. And I'll show you a bit later on configuring the MySQL file. So now that is the error log. What I'm going to show you at the end of the video as well is how we can centralize this log so you don't have to be connected to your server to read it. But first, let's move on to the next type of MySQL log, which is the general log. So the general query log is going to be the general record of what the SQL server is doing. The server is going to write information to this log when a client connects, disconnects, or on each SQL query that is received from the client. This means it's a brilliant place to debug what went wrong with a client making a query. As you can see exactly what was sent to the MySQL server. Now it's actually off by default, so we need to go ahead and enable this. There's two ways to do this. One of them is by using the MySQL monitor command line, and the other one is by using the MySQL config file. I'm gonna go ahead and show you both. So to start off, we're gonna use the command line here. So when we're here, we can do sudo and then MySQL like so. Once we've done this, we can come in here and we can actually run our first command, which is gonna be show variables like, and then I'm gonna do a percentage general here in quotation marks, and that's just gonna pattern match to check for the global variables. Once we've done that, you can see we have two global variables here. One is general underscore log, and one is general underscore log file. As you can see, this is off by default. And also the log file location isn't actually in that slash var slash log slash MySQL. So we can go ahead and change this as well to make sure it's in the location that we like. So if we wanna go ahead and turn on the general log, what we can do is set global like so. Then you can just type general underscore log, and then that's gonna equal to on like so. And then to change that general log file name, we can obviously do set and then global and then general underscore log underscore file like this. And then we can make that equal to, and for me, I'm gonna make that equal to var slash log slash mysql slash general dot log like so. We can go ahead and save that. And then when we go ahead and run this show variables like command again, what you see is our general log is now on. And then our general log file here as well has been changed to the right location. Now the general log file is worth noting. This needs to be in a place that the MySQL user actually has access to, which is why I still use the MySQL folders that the MySQL user we know already has access to. So you may struggle to save this somewhere else if that MySQL user doesn't have access.
access. So now that we've got this on, what I'm going to go ahead and do is just run a really quick query on one of my databases. This is just so we can see the information that comes out in the general log. So I'm going to do use employees here, then I'm just going to do select and then star, and then we'll do from employees, and then I'll do limit of 10 like so once that's done i'm going to go ahead and quit out of this and we'll also look at the second method of changing this to make sure the general log is on and that's going to be using the config file so we go ahead and we quit this if i just clear this console now where you're going to find the config file on linux is going to be in slash etc slash mysql like so once you've done that if you list what's in here you should have a file called my and then dot cnf like this we go into there i'm going to use nano here so sudo nano my dot cnf you should see a file that looks a little bit like this now to turn on the general log we need to add a section and in this section here it's going to be called mysql d like so then underneath here we can simply do general underscore log and then in here, it's not actually going to be equal to on or off. This is going to be equal to one for on and then zero for off. We can do the same thing for our general underscore log underscore file like so. And we're just going to set this to slash var slash log slash MySQL and then slash general dot log like we did using the other method. So there we go. That's how you can use this in the config file. Now you do need to go ahead and save this. And then you also need to restart your SQL server. To do that, you need to do sudo system ctl restart and then mysql.service like so once that's done this should save and then you should get the general log file so let's go ahead and take a look at that so as we said before that is now going to be in our var slash log slash mysql folder as we change the location now if i list what's in here we see we have the error log and the general log now i'm going to take a look at that general log by doing sudo less and then general log and in here, you can see the stuff that we ran since we turned it on. So we did that show variables command there. Then you can see that when I ran that use database, it did select database and then it initialized the database. So it doesn't necessarily map one to one with exactly the queries you ran when you do things in that command line. But you can see here as well, when I did that select star from employees limit 10, that also came up in here. And this one here is from when we restarted the server, it went ahead and it ran its own commands as well. So you can see it really does just log out any query from any client that was connected to it there so that is the general log and that one is as i said quite cool there if you need to do some debugging and find out what went wrong with the queries so the next one we're going to look at is the slow query log this slow query log is going to consist of the sql queries that take more than a certain amount of time to execute that time is going to be customizable by you this means it's a really useful one to find those queries that you may need to go in and optimize to speed up your application we can use the methods that we used for the general log to enable this i'll be doing this in the my config file but you could also use the global variable method that i showed you in the first section but what we're going to do is we're going to edit the config file here as i just prefer that method as it's quite clear so to get back to that we can do sudo and then slash or cd slash etc and then mysql like so again you can list the files in here just to make sure that you're in the right directory then we're going to do sudo nano and then dot my dot cnf and we should see that general log line that we had before now in the same section just right underneath what we can do is we can enable slow underscore query log and then we're going to set that to one underneath here we're going to put where we want to output this file so we're going to output that to the same place we did with the other ones so you can do slow underscore query underscore log underscore file like so we can make that equal to slash var slash log slash my sql and then slash slow dot log for me is what i'm going to call it again you can call that anything and then underneath here we're also going to specify something called the long underscore query underscore time and this is going to be the time in seconds that you want a slow query to be so i'm going to set this to two but maybe if your queries are already taking a long time like two seconds is the normal you want to set this to like four or something like that just to make sure you're catching those really slow ones i'm going to set this to two here then we're going to go ahead and save this file and once we save this file we can go ahead and restart the service again by doing sudo systemctl restart and then mysql.service so once we've done that, this will now start logging out our slow queries. Now, obviously I don't have any queries that I know are particularly slow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the MySQL command line and I can just run a test one. If I do select and then sleep one here, 
What this is gonna do is obviously run a query that takes one second. Now I'm doing this one to show you that this one isn't gonna be in the slow query log. Now, if I do one that is three seconds, we should see this one in the slow query log as our slow query time or our long query time was set to two seconds. So if I go ahead and quit out of this, we can now go to cd slash var slash log slash mysql like we were at before. If I list the files in here, we now have three. So we have that error log, the general log and the slow log. And then I'm going to go ahead and look at that slow.log like so. So there we go. We're in that slow.log. What you can see is we have that select and then that three second sleep that we had before. And we don't have that one that we had with sleep one as that one wasn't considered a slow log. So you can see you have some information like the time that it took the query. You have the rows sent and the rows examined by the query. Obviously, if you're actually doing some proper queries, these might be some important numbers to look at. Now, it's worth noting this file can be a little bit difficult to read, which is why MySQL comes with its own utility to help you pass this. If we get out of this, what you can do is you can do sudo and then you can do mysql like so and then dump slow and then you can just put in the slow.log file that we had before and what you'll see this is going to print out in a bit of a nicer format those files or those queries that took a long time so you can see we got one count of this sleep function taking a bit too long you can see it took three seconds there you can see how long it was locked for how long it was row and also what called it which was my root user so that was the slow query log there. And as I said, really useful to find out those queries that you need to go in and optimize. Now, the last log file to know about is the binary log. The binary log contains events that describe database changes, such as if you do a table create or a table delete. It's also going to contain these statements that could have made changes. So if you did a delete, but it didn't have any matched rows, it will still be in there, but it won't contain anything like select or show or anything like that that doesn't actually modify a table. It's also worth noting that this binary log serves two purposes as it's not really human readable, but it's useful for replication and also for restoration. So it's useful to know where these files are, as if you ever need to do any recovery operations or you need to create a replica of your database, you may need some of these binary log files. So for binary logs, if we go into sudo MySQL, so we go onto the MySQL monitor, you can actually just do show binary logs like so. And that's going to show you the binary log files that we have. The other useful one is if we do show variables like we did before, and then we do like and then we come in here and we do the same pattern matching, but this time we do log underscore bin like so. You can find out where these are saved to. So you can see on that log bin index and base name, it's going to be slash var slash lib slash mysql. And then it's going to be saved as bin log dot index like this. So we go ahead and look where these files are, because as I said, they're not really human readable. So it's not too important to actually go into them yourself, but maybe again, useful to know where they are. So if I just do sudo ls and then I do slash var slash lib slash mysql like so, we should see is you can see I have my bin log files there so we can find those location of them as I said not too important to go and look inside of them but it's just useful to know where they are so you can see that MySQL has a lot of utilities for logging and viewing them but now let's look at a cool method to save you the headache of viewing and checking these files on the server manually and also how we can look at some metrics like queries per second and a load more and also set up alerts for when queries are taking abnormally long to do that we can use better stack now you can get started with a free account, but once you sign up, you're gonna to get to a page that looks like this. So you can go to here, you can go to logs and then sources. Once we're here, we're gonna click connect source. Then we can give this a name that we want. For me, I'm gonna choose MySQL server like so, and you're gonna to wanna to change this platform here to MySQL. Click create source once you've done that, and you're gonna get a source token down here that you may want to note down. Once you've done that, we're gonna to go to the documentation page here for better stack MySQL logging. In here, you'll see we have some options whether you wanna collect logs and metrics or just the logs. We're gonna be doing this logs and metrics version. So first I need to use this command here, which is the MySQL root one. So I'm just gonna do sudo and then run that. And it's gonna ask for my password, so I'm gonna put that in. Once we're in here, we need to create a user called better stack metrics. This is just to allow it to read the metrics from MySQL and have it as a user so you're not using the root user so it doesn't have access to anything it shouldn't. And here you can see you need to change the password here from dollar your password to one of your choice. So for me, I'm actually gonna change that to the super safe password of password. I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. For the rest of them as well, I'm gonna go ahead and paste in these values here. So we can go ahead and do that all at once and hit enter and there we go, it's gonna save all of them. And now once we've done that, we can go ahead and do flush privileges and exit. So go ahead and paste in those commands there. Now we've done that, we need to set up our exporter config. So we're gonna sudo and then nano on this here. So if we do sudo nano like so, and then paste that in. 
And now that we've done that, we need to paste in the values from here and make sure you change this password to the password that you had set up. So I'm going to change this to password and then we'll save that file there. Now that we've done that, we need to install the MySQL exporter. Luckily, there's a nice script here from BetterStack to help you get started with that. If you want, you can go to this link and actually download the script to see what it is running. But I'm going to go ahead and run this one here. Now, once that's done, it's going to tell us to continue with the step by step guide. And the next step is going to be to start up the MySQL exporter. So I'll go ahead and paste that in and then again, type in my password there. The last one now is to set up Vector here and you can see we've selected the platform of Ubuntu, which is the one I'm on. And you can see here, we need to replace this bit here with the source token that we saved earlier. Or what you can do is you can go in here and hit search and then you can find the source that you set up and it will automatically populate that with your production source token. Remember, only you should be seeing that source token. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and paste that command in and it's first going to tell you what it's going to be doing. So it's going to be installing vector, downloading the vector config and then restarting the vector service. We're going to hit enter and wait for this to complete. So there we go. Once that's completed, the last thing I'm going to do, which you don't actually need to do, is I'm going to restart my MySQL service. The only reason to do this is just so I can see it coming through on BetterStack and the logs coming through that it has restarted. You, again, you don't need to do that as your server may already be up and it will be logging anyway. Now that I've done that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to BetterStack now. So once you're back on the BetterStack dashboard, we can click on Livetail here and you're going to start to see your logs coming through as they happen. And what you can see is we can click in this and get some various information about it. And you can see some at a glance here. So you've got the time, the message, where it came from, which was the MySQL server. And again, when you click in, you can see it came from that error.log file we had on my Ubuntu server and a load of other different information. So better stack is going to allow us to query these in a load of different ways, search by date and a load of other things. The other cool thing we can do as we set up the metrics is we can go to dashboard now. Now you will have one by default, which is going to be the host vector. This is going to be information about where vector is running. So this is my Ubuntu dev server. If we want to see some MySQL information, we can click create dashboard. We can go ahead and search for the MySQL template dashboard and we can click add. Now, once we add this dashboard, we're going to start to see some information here. So you can see that my server, since I restarted it, has only been up for 49 seconds there. We've got a buffer pool size of 128 megabytes. And as you start to use your database, you're going to get a load of different queries coming through. So we have client thread activity. We have table locks per second, sorts per second. We've got slow queries per second and a load of other information that we're going to get through as we start to use our database provided in this nice UI to see it all. So you can see if something is going wrong or if something is a bit different from how it usually is. Another cool feature on that as well is it's automatically set up an alert when we use this dashboard for slow queries per second. So this means it can email you, it can text you, or it can even send you a Slack message, however you configured it, if something has been detected as an anomaly in these slow queries. Now, an anomaly here, as you can see, is essentially going to describe it based on sort of an average rate. If it goes above the average rate for slow queries, it will reach out and tell you that maybe you need to look at your server, maybe something is slowing it down or something like that. So you can go ahead and fix it promptly. And you have a load of options in here as well to change this, whether you want it based on a percentage change of slow queries or a threshold or various other things. As I said, just a really nice feature to alert someone on your team to go ahead and look at the server as something may be going wrong. So that is all I have for MySQL logging. We learn about those four types of logs and how we can view them, as well as how we can use betterstack.com to centralize those logs and view some metrics about it and set up an alert for if slow queries are going over their normal rate. Now, if you want to watch a video on how we could add a Redis layer in front of this using Node.js, check out this video here. And if you want to watch the one YouTube is recommending, check out this one here. As always, please subscribe and thank you very much for watching.